heard the internet has been losing his mind lately well i can't imagine the minute that it hasn't been but look yo we're gonna check out some amazing videos that y'all been sending me man make sure we smash that like button let's get this video to like twenty thousand likes man share this video with your friends and family 60 percent of the people to watch this channel aren't even subscribed man we got a large viewership but most of the people aren't even subscribed but so go ahead smash that subscribe button so you don't miss these videos as soon as they drop but look man make sure y'all follow this video along man it's very interesting y'all sent some really good clips man we're gonna have a good time with this video just know if you're going through a tough time we're going through this thing called life together you're never ended by yourself and remember i am not in charge of what you believe but look make sure you're going out here doing your own damn research Stop dating men. Stop having sex with men. Stop talking to men. Divorce your husband. Leave your fucking boyfriends. Leave them. Join the Republican Party. Keep your hair. I never thought I'd have to say that. Woke up this morning to find out that the party of love and tolerance is shaving their heads in protest? I guess. And or because they want to go against society's beauty standards? Make it make sense. On second thought, don't. I don't want to know. What I do know is that they have pledged to divorce their husbands, break up with their boyfriends, and stop dating men entirely for the next four years. As a lesbian, now I'm actually scared. Because please, please don't come over here, straight liberal women. I would like to respectfully decline this invitation and pass you off to the trans and they them folks. Imagine hating a presidential candidate so hard that you denounce his entire gender. Like, whole thing, just, we're good, guys. Nope, nope, not my president. No men at all, actually. I'm just gonna join a convent. I'm not really sure what y'all are trying to achieve, but I'm really looking forward to seeing less liberal women on the dating side. I'd like to point out my hyper-feminists in the chat. If you're denouncing men for the next four years or indefinitely, you're actually gonna have to cash in on that equality you asked for. Yeah, no men? Sorry, you have to do all the manly duties yourself. Yeah, you're gonna have to go out there and get a blue collar job and provide for your family, do the yard work, take the trash out, do all the dirty jobs that you just didn't wanna do because of quality, right? No more men, that's, that's all you, rooting for you. We cooked. How did we get here? What in the Alice in Wonderland nightmares is going on right now? All I can say is how fucking dare you? If you voted for that man, if you voted for anybody other than Kamala and you live and you live in one of the states that it was, you know, close, or if you didn't vote. I'm terrified of her. I, I, I don't know if it's the glasses or I really do believe her. She's giving me like. I'm going to fuck around and poison you, put you in my freezer, cut you into pieces, you know, and eat you later. And your family's not going to know about it. Like, she give me those type of vibes. Fuck you. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Go, go. <laughs> I chose family. I chose women. I chose America. I love you. How the fuck is this still happening? All I've ever known politically is hatred. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with you. I'm done with you and your mother and your sister. I'm just done with all of this. Ah! I'm, so I'm sorry. It's all my friends who are trying to support you. I don't understand. I'm scared of this man I am. If this guy does end up winning again, all of the people who voted for him will be like happy and they'll just be celebrating. And everyone else, everyone who feels threatened by him is fucking scared. Like we're, we're scared for our lives. We're scared for our friends. How dare you put this man into office for another four years knowing damn well what it means for our country, what it means for us as a people. To know that there is that much ignorance and that much hate in this country, it's so terrifying. 
It's so terrifying. How the fuck are we back in this same situation again? Who the fuck is voting for him? Genuinely. Fuck you. I don't want to hear about how shitty your life gets under his policies. Live with that decision. Sit with it. Let it make you uncomfortable. Fuck you. Yeah, we cooked. We cooked. We cooked. This politics has got people minds just whacked. And then they say like, oh, people that believe in aliens and conspiracy theories and, th and things like that. Oh, they're the. No, you are cooked. That's why you need to take a break from the internet sometimes. That's why I don't always be on the internet. I don't post videos every day. You have to detox, man. <laughs> now these bitches can sit on TV, talk about bum and whole goddamn countries. But you said something about these goddamn incubator babies, they remove your goddamn content. You goddamn incubator babies, you gonna get your goddamn head bust. You goddamn children of the corn and you goddamn cabbage patch kids, your days is numbered. I, the Lord, shall perform this myself. You fucking incubator babies, and you fucking cabbage patch kids, and you children of corn, and you goddamn moors who made them. The Lord is at your fucking top. You can report this shit all you want to. It ain't gonna stop your goddamn head from rolling. You take a good look at this goddamn face so you know when you see it. You make sure you take a picture. I'm going off, y'all. As you see, this is Matilda McCreer. This is supposed to be one of the last known survivors of Clotilda. Where does it say this lady born at? 1857 in West Africa. You can see that on screen, right? It's right here, 1857, West Africa. And it says she died in 1940 in Selma, Alabama, right? When you come to CNN, what does it say about this woman? And just so you know, we talking about uh, Matilda Creer. Here she go, right here, right? So what does it say right here? It says a woman who was taken from Africa, from Africa when she was two years old has been identified as the last known survivor of the transatlantic slave trade. Mind you, it says she was born in West Africa in 1857, and it says she was taken from there when she was two years old. Let me show you the problem with that, all right? Watch this. Even when you go to nationalgeographic.com, they even have her lineage laid out. Look, they got all the people she related to. Look, they got her, they got a, 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 um, all the descendants of her. These are all her family right here. They got it all laid out. These are the people that they're telling, you know, Yah Yoruba, Yah came from West Africa, blah, blah, blah. They're telling them all these lies. Watch this. Now, right here in the middle, it says something about her grandson saying, hey, I don't, you know, I just know what she said. I don't know, you know, if this stuff is true or not. It's, it's, it's a whole bunch of bull crap. When you get down, they got more pictures of her family right here. Here's why. When you go to Ancestry.com, it says that Matilda McCreer was born where? North Carolina. Uh-oh. That is a huge problem. That is a huge problem, ladies and gentlemen. It says she's born in North Carolina. Now, if she was kidnapped in West Africa when she was two years old, that means her parents would have been from there too, right? Because if that's where she was kidnapped from, that means her parents would have been from there too. Watch this. Where does it say her parents was born? It says her father is O.C. Craig, and he's born in North Carolina. It says her mother is Gracie Creer. She was born in North Carolina. Uh-oh. We have a problem, Houston. We have a serious, serious problem. Somebody is lying about our history. Y'all said y'all kidnapped this woman when she was two years old in West Africa, man, and brought her to America. That's what y'all said. But the government, this is government. This is not me doing this. This is the federal government documenting saying this woman is from North Carolina, man. In plain sight. Y'all don't be remembering shit. 
I remember everything. Y'all don't remember the 35W bridge collapse. Y'all don't even remember having to build the emoji. Y'all had to, you had to, you had to build that bitch, build the emoji. Y'all be through this bitch acting like y'all remember everything and then y'all don't even remember the earthquakes in Haiti. A lot of y'all wasn't even around and don't even remember when CTFU, FSC, and all that shit came out. Y'all don't even remember the fusion bootleg era. This how I know y'all remember. Cause if y'all if y'all remember, y'all will remember the celebrities was wearing bootleg shit. It was a whole era. Like Fabulous and all of them was wearing crazy, crazy big bootleg clothing. Y'all don't even remember when, when G Unit 50 Cent them came through this bitch with the flamboyant white beaters, the tank top. Them bitches was them bitches was so bad. Y'all don't remember the pain that came that, that came from your ankle getting hit by a scooter or the motherfucking bed rail. Y'all don't remember Italian dunkers, bro. Y'all don't remember the, the grilled cheeses and shit, bro. Y'all don't y'all don't remember the peanut butter cracker sandwiches from the field trips. Y'all don't remember when little girls used to actually look like little girls and, and, and dress they age. Y'all don't remember when young niggas wanted to be the best on the court or on the field, not the one with the best Glock. Y'all don't remember none of that. Somebody come out. Oh, this is actually from a different angle. <laughs> all right, look, all right, all right, I ain't tripping, right? Y'all done seen this? Let me know how y'all feel about this. Like. Nope, this is not CGI, as unearthly ships the size of a city are coming out of hiding, appearing all over the US ready to attack, and they've been monitoring us. People were terrified after a New Yorker went viral when he recorded a huge unearthly ship moving fast towards him in New York City, near a military base, shooting white beams, with many experts saying the eerie words, they are here to kill. This gets creepier as several people from different parts of the city recorded the ship from different angles, moving around erratically and zooming several miles per second, seemingly trying to look for something or someone. Other videos show the haunting size of the ship being as big as several New York City skyscrapers combined, with way more weapons than us, and our time on Earth might be coming to an end. As this all comes after several UFO sightings across the world, with many of them being spotted in our military bases. Others believe this particular New York City sighting is a hologram to promote Little Uzi's album. That's, that's, you see how they try to add it in and in? Yes, that's the thing though. Yeah, that's big and that's cool and it gets you, you know, a nice mansion and stuff. But I think like if, like I remember when I was on SoundCloud and a, a hundred people was listening, I felt amazing. Like how does a hundred people know who I am? So if a thousand people brought it or anything, or a thousand people listened, that'd be cool. I know one person out of my shows be singing it word for word. I pulled up in the UFO. Who are you? I'm Little Uzi Vert. From Philadelphia. I know when it's the right time, it's gonna be the biggest impact. Everything I talk about really be going on, like at that time. I really don't know what's going on. Those people really don't know me. They act like they know me. I'm in the middle of a storm, but I'm dry. I won't say I enjoy it. And you're a little Uzi? Very. It's like Uzi right. You cannot buy yeah. my swag right out the store. Yeah. Let me tell y'all a true story. Be simple and watch this video to the end. Little Uzi, no, you didn't. TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. Let's go. Guys, look. <laughs> look, they say that Little Uzi did this, guys, in New York City, Times Square. This is ridiculous, guys. Look. Now, you know what time is it, guys. Now, look, there's somebody coming down on that thing. I don't know if it's Little Uzi or if it's. Shut up. <laughs> you know exactly what that is. They're prepared. 
preparing you. <laughs> Stop playing with me, son. It's not a game, guys, and this is getting me upset. <laughs> how is Lil Uzi allowed to do this? Oh, we know how. That's the warm up for the PBB that's coming. Stop playing with me, son. It's not a game, guys. And did you see his album cover? <laughs> Come on. You still don't believe it? Well, I know. Let me tell you exactly what this is. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> My secret source just told me that this is called Lesser Magic. Stop playing with me, son. It's not a game, guys. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> I tell you that much. You know what's going on out here, guys. <laughs> they showing you every single day. So they preparing you. <laughs> so when it's... Shut up! Stop playing with me, son. TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. I'm only talking about little Uzi and his album cover. <laughs> it's not a game out here, guys. But I tell you one thing: if I'm ever out in Times Square and I see Lil Uzi do that shit and he lands, hey, we knew that. Hey, we knew that was coming right there. But look, man. All right, so let me know how y'all feel about the Lil Uzi Vert thing. You know, um, obviously, you know how we know the technologies that can be used to like that off like project Bluebeam. do y'all think they blue beaming it up they practicing this the practice run on us and shit you feel me like it's pretty cool though hell of advertisement for this joint hell of marketing campaign that they got going on here but uh, some people have been like hitting me hit me hit me dre where you at like talk about the uzi vert ufo i'm like what's the uzi vert ufo i bet it's pretty interesting though I mean, obviously, holograms and stuff for me, I would say so. But that would be damn awesome if it was a a UFO and they were showing us, though. But I don't believe that's what it is. But y'all let me know how y'all feel about it in the comments down below. Don't believe everything that you see, you know, really assess it, you know. So I'm sitting here. My wheels was turning about this thing. But look, very interesting. We're going to keep going, though. But I think it's a lot other things going on that y'all should be concerned with. And we're going to get into that, right? Did y'all pay attention to the artwork from the album cover? I bet, you know, maybe, maybe this is just a brilliant marketing campaign because they know that the community is strong here and we was eventually going to talk about this, y'all. Real talk. Hi, man, we're going to school today, man, with G-Dark. Remember how he said this was lesser magic, right? Go, man. Lesser magic is the word of the day. Lesser magic. What is lesser magic? Y'all might want to know. Okay, well, lesser magic. Let me, let me get to you my way. Man, it's when, when, a, when they can manipulate you into whatever agenda or push they're trying to push, but you willingly accept it to do it without them telling you and enforcing it. They're just putting it out there, and you're choosing to go do it. You're choosing it. So whatever harms come with that, well, you walked into it. We didn't force you into it. We just said, hey, this was going on. We're making this look cool. And, and you know what I'm saying? We pass that agenda and you take it and you like it and we make you love it. You gonna keep pushing it. They're trending. You gonna make it trend. We just throwing it out there and you're enforcing it. You're um promoting it. You're loving it too. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. And it's the harm coming behind that. You really can't hold them accountable in a sense. So the karma don't come back on them because it's like, hey, we didn't tell you to do it. We didn't we didn't make you do it. We didn't, you know what I'm saying, to you make you do it. So therefore, you said you were going to do it. You wanted to wear that. You wanted to do that. You wanted to take that. You wanted to look at that. And you, so you causing it on yourself. So you can't get mad at me. It's like a person, you know what I'm saying, here. Your headache, you got a headache? Here. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make everybody get on medication to get rid of these headaches. They don't know what we're doing is create more business and revenue in off of something that, you know what I'm saying, we're creating more problems by giving it to them, and they don't keep coming back. And guess what? They don't want to stop their headaches, so they don't keep coming back. So you really can't get mad at it for when it happens that way. So like, shit, if you choose to do that, you know what come with it, right? You know the risk. That's why they put the little words at the bottom of the screen. When you take a certain medication, and it come with this side effect, this side effect, this side effect, just to cure one headache, well, take the risk. Who, who? Nobody made you take take the risk. You just choose to get rid of that. So it's like that's it's, it's okay. We're gonna, you know what I'm saying? That's manipulation, but. With that being said, it's not we didn't force it. So you can't blame them. It's basically how it is. 
You can't blame them because you're willingly doing it. And we go through this every day, man. It's been on us every day. Clocks. Clocks. What is a clock? Makes you look at time different, right? So you go 12 hours a day, 25 hours a day, minutes, 60 minutes. It's, you know what I'm saying? How you move. So it's like they in, they didn't even enforce it. They just gave it and gave you some, a sense of direction to use, which is it, it, it really hinders you in a way because you look at time different. You know what I'm saying? You age faster looking at time different. They even slow time down and speed it up. I don't know how the fuck they do that, but they, hey, we're going up a, we're going up an hour. Hey, we're going back an hour. Hey, they, I get more sleep. I get less sleep. How the fuck that makes sense? Hey, you got down. How the hell that makes sense? How you can speed time or slow down just that easy? Illusions, man. That's a magic. I'm just saying. You guys, oh my God, watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a Salvan guy here. Season two. And here we are. Remember last season. When I said that they were blocking off the Hobart Trail with big river rock and, and, and uh, 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 blocking the Hobart Trail where you go to the door and the actual ruins. Well, check it out. This season, on season two, look at what they've done. They've actually blocked the trail. See the trail going into the Hobart, to the back trail? Now, this gate's been here a while, but they put these cables. See this cable? See the brush where there would possibly be a snake? Why would they put this cable right here? I'll tell you why. It's to keep you out. Season two, the South Mountain guy. I'm uh... back. God be with you. There she is. The Sphinx of South Mountain. Arizona's wonder of the world, and I'm gonna prove it. This is why the colors are in black and white. And let me show you why. So, as somebody just said, all of those are slaves. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is these people are born into this. They are from incubators. They're probably clones. You know, there's lots of orphans and infants. You know, this it's really weird when you start to think about it. Like, think about all these, these buildings being there, but then all the people who are there are usually orphans or infants. And there's some sort of reproduction happening because where did all the children come from? And we'll talk about that next, but there's some interesting part in here and it talks about, you know, a lot of people say this is all paper mache. You know, they didn't use any real copper. They didn't use any real materials. It was all fake. That's actually, that's the story, but it caught on fire and it looks like stone to me. But this is why the colors are in black and white. And let me show you why it says, Crowning the Central Agriculture Dome was the only statue at the fair by Augustus St. Gardens, who originally intended to make a statue by name Diana, which was 18 and a half feet of pure copper. This was a huge weather vane for the Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden, doesn't that sound familiar? We know that one. New York City, I think that's where it is, or wherever it is. It's New York or New Jersey, whatever it is. But it's a common name that we still hear to this day. Y'all know what this sounds like, though? The Cabbage Pass situation? This sounds like... I've, I've, I've heard of this situation. I, I know about this, right? But... It reminds me of Vivarium. You remember, have y'all seen that movie, Vivarium? When they went into this perfect neighborhood and everything was perfectly the same and they couldn't get out and they was forced to raise this baby that was in the package? It's like the custodians made them raise their babies and stuff and bring them into the world. That's wild. But the baby, as the baby got older, it aged very fast. It, 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 it seemed like it sucked the life force out of the, the the man and the woman that was raising him. Crazy.
crazy. Let's get back to it, though. Y'all need to check that out if you haven't seen it. Then you'll know what I'm talking about. Come back to the comments once you do. Which consisted of the Great Cholula Pyramid. The term Chola is in general an Aztec word. East Indian mathematics that they learned from the Americans later on passed into the Achaemenid Empire. This was later introduced to the Arabs and later to the Romans until the entire Eastern Hemisphere knew complex mathematics. The Mayans gave to East India the concept of the legend of Japan. In Mayan religion, this was a man favored by the gods because he was able to resist all temptation of woman and remain celibate. In Hindu culture, there is Ayapan, whose story is identical. It must also be noted that the Mayan character Yapan was also pronounced Japan, just like the East Asian country, which just so happens to be much closer to America than India, Myanmar, or Cambodia. Even if you go to Wikipedia and research Ayapan of Hinduism, you will see that the word Ayapan is not an Indian word and it in fact originated from somewhere else. I want you guys to watch this clip until the end. Listen to the numbers used. Look at the numbers on the side when I came across this video. 7447, we'll talk about that later. From the beginning of motion picture history, Hollywood has tried to show you what the afterlife is really like. Good afternoon. And what would be? Thought what would be? Where am I? Is this heaven? No, it isn't heaven. Is it hell? No, it isn't hell either. Actually, there is no hell. Although I hear Los Angeles is getting pretty close. <laughs> well, Daniel, let me tell you what's going on. When you're born into this universe, you're in it for a long, long time. You have many different lifetimes. And after each lifetime, there's an examining period which you're in now. You see, every second of every lifetime is always recorded. And as each one ends, we sort of look at it. Look at a few of the days, examine it. And then if everybody agrees, you move forward. What do you mean move forward? I mean, move forward, continue onward. The point of this whole thing is to keep getting smarter, to, to keep growing, to use as much of your brain as possible. For example, I use 48% of my brain. Do you know how much you use? 47? <laughs> three. I'm sorry? Three. I use 3% of my brain? Yes, don't worry about it. Everybody on Earth uses 3% of their brain. 3 to 5%. That's why they're there. Three? Three percent? Three percent? You mean nobody on Earth uses more than that? When you use more than five percent of your brain, you don't want to be on Earth, believe me. Well, not that your takeout places aren't lovely, but there are many more exciting destinations for smarter people. Now, being from Earth as you are and using as little of your brain as you do, your life has pretty much been devoted to dealing with fear. It has? Well, everybody on Earth deals with fear. That's what little brains do. What are little brains? That's what we call you folks behind your back. <laughs> no. Forgive me. Who are you? Well, I'm just like you. I was on Earth a long time ago. But I advanced. I moved forward. I got over my fears, and I got smarter. Did you have friends whose stomachs hurt? Every one of them. It's fear. Fear is like a giant fog. It sits on your brain and blocks everything. Real feelings, true happiness, real joy. They can't Coming get up right here, fog. look what but the guy is reading in the suit. Buddy, Check it out. What do we life. talk about? God, my 3% is swimming. Uh, uh, what are you reading? <laughs> you wouldn't understand this. It's just numbers. My man said my 3% is swimming. <laughs> you read numbers? Yes, sir. 
He says, you so read I'm numbers? So trial for being the guy afraid. says, yes, sir. First of all, I don't like to call it a trial. What have we been Second. working on, people? Well, what if I'm guilty? What happens to me? Don't think innocent or guilty. Worst comes to worst, you'll go back to Earth and you'll try it again. Well, what do you do? You just keep going back until you get it right? Well, you don't keep going back. Eventually, they'll throw you away. The show will begin in 30 seconds. Welcome to the Past Lives Pavilion. Oh my God. In a moment, you will be asked to place your right hand on the plate next to you. An image of yourself in a former life will soon appear. When you have seen enough, simply remove your hand from the plate. Since we want to be fair and accommodate everyone, you will be limited to five past lives only. Thank you. Please place your hand on the plate now. What the hell is this? Elizabeth, time for supper, darling. Be there in a moment, Mumsy. What the hell's going on here? Today is election day, so I'm glad the Simpsons showed this and gave me more content. Look at this real quick. Just a synchronicity, of course. Election day. I want you to look at the number on the hotel. It's going to say 350. 350 is just 35. If you tune in later, I'm going to show you what is the significance of the 35 or the 53. It was also the Wayans Brothers apartment number on their television show, right? You can do your research, see if you can find it. It's there. You may have to actually pull up a season and watch an episode so you can see the door number. But look at it. 3-5, right? We starting to figure out the communication with these numbers. I'm going to show you later what 3-5 signifies, okay? Quit letting them play in your fucking face. All right? Expose them all. Okay, so the Simpsons don't predict anything. It's predictive programming, but what do we notice about the background in this scene I'm about to play? What do we have here? Oh, right behind Homer. What is that on the chicken that's made to look like its wings? Since when does a bird have two sets of wings? Don't you see the 33? <laughs> With the sun disk programming over here. With three o'clock on it, which is three and 12, which is 33 again. Right, but see how obvious it is and you know what you're looking for? This is cryptographic communication, guys. This is the Simpsons. One of the longest running television programs in TV history. I wonder why. But see how sneaky it is. See what I mean by subconscious programming. Once you pay attention here, 
but look bright if you just pay attention to the surroundings. Look, this is right there. Look real quick, crazy, right? Let's just do it in real time. You're gonna see it real quick here, but maybe I didn't go back far enough. Look. <laughs> We're letting them play in your fucking face. We was talking for like 40 minutes. She said there was first war that no one's talking about on the ground. Uh, the war broke out down there before there was even a war that was announced here. It is a secret society that is uh, hidden from us. Somehow they got up here. They don't belong up here, but they somehow got through here. And they're not regular people but they disguise as people she did say that they don't want to talk about it and they don't want us talking about it and if you do they somehow try to close your mouth and she said 2024 is going to be a massive change these are spiritual machines flying around they are not physical did you understand so it's all about certain consciousness. It's all about certain things that you know. Once you know it, you automatically vibrate. You are visible to your car. Your car parks somewhere. All of us have one. All of us have a craft. All of us have a craft parked somewhere. But the only way you can activate this craft you got to be in certain resonance. You got to have the sound. They will send you the sound. They will send you the special word. They will tell you what to say. Once you say it, it's almost like you got your car key and you unlock the door of the car. That is the sound. All of us will unlock that car seat. When we when we get that sound, your spaceship will activate. That is your macabre. And when the time come for you to leave, they will beam you out of here. <laughs> okay this is how you leave the earth that's why this place is a freaking firmament it's a dome it's a prison planet they want us to evolve and they know who to pick out of here okay they know who to pick you to be out of here Okay. See, this is why you got to keep watching these videos. Look, y'all send me stuff and I align them in stories and where you can better obtain the information without me over speaking in the videos. You know, I used to speak a lot in the videos, but some of these videos, I, I, I make them speak more for themselves. So you're not coerced to believe a certain thing. And if you're just here for entertainment, do that too as well. I'm not one of those people that force, force, force beliefs on you, but it's a cool story. And just, 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 just listen to it. We need to be vibrating and getting to those next levels, you know. Now, theoretically, now, I, man, if I had a, if look, just know. See, a lot of people speak about oh, being so spiritual that you just float on air. You know, I'm not that guy. I'm still working on myself, right? Me, you know. Let me know in the comments down below if you're still working on yourself. Some people feel like they got it all and they got the secrets. You feel me? But I'm not one of those people. I'm, I'm always climbing. But at the same time, man. That would be a dope change of events, though, if if you had like a UFO. What would be the first place you would go? What would be the first question you? What would be the first question you would want answered if you was to open up that theoretical, you know, object that UFO, and it can give you all the information, right, and take you anywhere in the galaxy? What would be that first question you would ask? I'll let y'all know mine's at the end of the video. They know who to pick. But we what we building though, so pay attention. You need to be out of here. This is why they are attacking these craft. These demons know. Okay? That's why they are attacking them now. Because they know that certain people is getting out of here. And they stay in themselves. They know these demons know they stuck. So it's out of jealousy. He's the crab in the barrel. This is the crab in the barrel mentality. Even though they stuck. So it's out of jealousy. He's the crab in the barrel. This is the crab in the barrel mentality. If one of us getting something, we all pull us down. Because that's what they know. That's the same theory and that's the same story they've been showing you in movie or anime. They show you when you go to the pit of hell, 
you got a bunch of hands they trying to grab your foot to pull you down because no one wants you to, to climb out of hell that's hypothetically speaking to what's going on here in this dimension of the earth these entities do not want you to leave because they want to feed off of you the devil uses two mediums to manipulate and deceive the people and those are time and politics i'll start with time first you have to know that satan works an anti-god system on earth using men you first have to know satan's place in this world you see he is the ruler of this world of earth now let that sink in that satan rules earth and one of the ways that he rules earth is through time, time. manipulation you see satan is very clever and he tricked us into buying into this 12 month calendar that we work under is a lie for you see if you do simple math and they say that there's four weeks in a month and there's 12 months in a year that would be equivalent to 48 weeks in a year so when you do a simple google search you will see that it's 52 weeks which means that we roughly have about four weeks of unaccounted time I'm roughly 672 almost 700 hours right throughout the year of unaccounted time That's and lot. so when you do the math daylight savings time is actually a fraud for i don't believe they're doing this to save daylight I believe they're doing this to trick the people into working a 12 month calendar year in disguise. We are really on a 13 month calendar like the Jewish calendar and like the Ethiopian Jews. This is why our time is different in the United States than in Ethiopia is because they are manipulating time. They are manipulating you to have less leisure time and more work time crammed in a 12 month calendar. And so what that means is you're basically working a whole month for free, and not even know it. And so when it seems like you're just waking up, going to work, getting off work, and then going right back to work and you seem like you're stuck in that cycle, it's because Satan made it that way so that where you are stuck in his system of work and distraction. And so what's happening is you're working so much that your work ethic is being taxed twice, maybe even three times, because now you're giving a company at the end of the year a whole month's worth of revenue that you don't even realize that you worked. And since Satan is the ruler of this earth he uses those tax dollars your hard-earned money that you work for basically to enslave you and trap you in a loop of time where all you're doing is working and benefiting him instead of yourself and in between time he's putting certain holidays that are specifically falling on the calendar so that not only is he taking your extra time away and making you work like a slave but he's also damning you in the spirit for those people who are celebrating these holidays on specific days that satan is making it fall on that day for you to celebrate it because it strengthens him while making you weaker in the eyes of the most high satan also uses politics in order to deceive the world you see, not only is he the ruler and not only does he have this anti-God system in place, but he uses this anti-God system through politics and voting. You see, voting actually hurts the people because we're not supposed to be 
a part of politics. And here's why. You see, Satan is an illusionist. And so he creates the illusions on the news to give people the ideas that they should vote and that they should be a part of his anti-God system. When you vote, you strengthen that anti-God system. And here's how. Satan controls the candidates that you're voting for. You have to understand there are thousands of people that can qualify to be the U.S. president and they only endorse in two people. That's either Trump or Kamala. They are controlled oppositions from Satan. So either one of them that you choose, Satan is in the background, right? And so this is how Satan gets away and avoids karma, right? When you vote, you are literally giving these presidents permission, permission right? To fuck you over. This is how they avoid karma. Because you have to look at all the past presidents. Barack Obama, what did he do? All he did was push the LGBTQ and now he made same-sex marriage legal. Something that the Most High in his book disagrees with. Look at Joe Biden. When you voted him in, thinking that he was going to do for the people, what did he do? He turned around and gave billions of dollars to the other side. So when you realize, hey, when you vote, you give Satan permission, you give his leaders permission to fuck you over. This is why when Americans vote, they don't see much change in politics. They just get they just receive a whole bunch of promises from Satan's leaders. And when they get into office, they do the complete opposite every single term. But they need you to vote in order for the anti-system to work. And this is why I say do not vote because you hurt and tear down Satan's anti-God system that is controlling you through time and politics. So when we stop voting, when we stop entertaining Satan, when we reach to the most high, right? You're going to start to see like we've been seeing now that these stars are falling. All of these celebrities who coincidentally are doing what? Endorsing the presidents. But we all know that these rappers don't really have no money. It's the labels that are endorsing their presidents. And who do you think runs the labels? The anti-God system. You see how Satan is using the same platforms or different platforms to poison the youth, to poison society, to take that money, to make you work extra. All the music that you're listening that's damning you, he's putting all of that in a pot and he's giving it to you. And he's using those same idols to get you to vote, to continue this anti-God system, to continue. But we can easily break it. Do you think that the mandatory vaccine was from God or was it a part of Satan's anti-God system? It's a lot to think about, man. That was a... That was an amazing breakdown, y'all. I do say so myself. That was an amazing breakdown. Let me know how y'all feel about that. Definitely, uh, the math is mapping. Let me know if the math is mapping in the comments. We're going to keep it moving, though. Real talk. Most celebrities are unrecognizable off camera. What does who mean to me? It's my sanctuary. It's the one place. Oh, I can let my guard down. That's where I can just kick back and be totally comfortable in my own skin. You know what I'm saying? Rock and Mortgage understands that home is where I can be myself. <laughs> and that feels pretty darn good. Why do y'all oh. face it? It's a joke. <sighs> home is where you feel the most comfortable. And Rocket Mortgage helps you feel comfortable financing that home with a personalized and convenient experience centered around you. Rocket Mortgage. Push button. Get mortgage.
I've never, <laughs> I've never seen that commercial before. That is, that's wild, look. Like, special effects, man. Like, I, that's my bet. Like, I don't think that's them showing us how they really look, or is it symbolism? Let me know in the comments down below, y'all. Yeah, y'all feel about that? It might be some symbolism, right? You got this. <laughs> Don't forget to like and follow and stay weird. Is it take it, take it, take it? What does it say about our past when just a hundred years ago, people were essentially shopping for infants? And why isn't this widely known? Could it be that this piece of history was deliberately buried or omitted due to its unsettling implications? I mean, did people actually need to mass purchase babies? Was this part of some grand repopulation scheme? Or a migration wave where orphans and young kids were sold and moved westward? We've touched on this topic before. About a year ago, we released a video called Repopulation Postcards and the Cabbage Patch Kids. Our understanding has since evolved and we got our hands on a brand new collection of absolutely draw-dropping postcards that we can't wait to share with you. If you missed that earlier video, here's a quick rundown. While researching for our old world photoshop episode, we stumbled upon a peculiar trend in postcards from the early 1900s. These postcards, dated from 1890 to 1920, are a genre unto themselves and were circulated throughout Europe and the United States. But here's where it gets wild. Not only do these cards feature babies sprouting from cabbages, there are other categories that make it abundantly clear what's going on. It would seem that babies were being sold in baby farms or even baby shops. We're about to unravel a historical enigma that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew about the past. They'll take you. They steal kids like you. Cross them over. Special ones. The power of your mind. That's what they want. Jake, what's up? Let's go. Want to go? Yeah. The boys. It's very common in adolescent boys. There he is. I'm Jill. I'm your intake administration supervisor. You pack your things? What exactly do they do at your clinic? I can assure you that all our tests are done in a controlled, child-friendly environment. Our approach is actually very gentle compared to standard treatments. I understand your concerns, but you don't have to worry at all. Can we pack? Yeah. What's wrong? What is that? What? It's the skin people from my dream. He's not human. That's not his real face. Oh. You have to believe me. This guy creepy. This guy can't pull him up. This is not normal. No, this is not normal. Katie showed her fellow judges too. and all of America that she's able to puff out her neck like a frog. Yeah. I mean, but look though, you know what I'm saying? That's not might not be a bad planet to go to. They, they got some good neck over there. You feel me? Like I'm just just saying, y'all. We're gonna keep going. Though. I'm sorry. You remember the Cabbage Patch Babies, right? Cabbage Patch Kids, those cute dolls that everybody was going crazy for. Did you know they have a dark history? And I'm not talking about the one where people were breaking their legs and fighting out in public to buy theirs. <laughs> Parents are fighting over these dolls. What we believe were just cute little dolls actually comes from a dark history where people truly believed that you could go and pick your baby out of a cabbage field. People had no idea how babies were made or where they came from. Y'all remember these dolls too. Like, don't act like you're not that old where you can't remember these. Some of y'all probably had some of these and your parents was at the stores throwing blows for these. So be appreciative when they brought one of these mugs home though. But the real story behind it though, do y'all believe they was really growing kids in cabbage packs and splicing DNA and stuff. I do believe the splicing in DNA, but them being stuffed in, stuffing in cabbage, for me it is a little out there but you know can't rule out the possibilities because i've never seen nobody not do it you feel me prove me wrong the farmers would plant seeds and then the couple would go and pick their baby out of a crop 
It's the same storyline as the stork, where the stork would go and bring a baby to an awaiting couple. The difference was the parents would go to the farm to pick the Cabbage Patch baby. And if parents were not worthy of receiving these babies, they'd get unalive babies in return as a form of punishment. Graphic warning on this video that I found online, I didn't want to post the full thing. This is from the 1800s and it was supposedly a fairy going to the Cabbage Patch to pick the babies out. They look like new babies too, like that's a little fresh baby. Um, and give it to the people who were awaiting their child. I don't know if they found this humorous. They also believed that babies couldn't feel pain back then. So the way she's handling the baby, it's weird, but they didn't believe that there was any pain happening. I'll probably never look at Cabbage Patch Babies the same after learning this. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna have to place that frog on that one again, cause uh, yeah. I ain't trying to have no smoke with that. That's crazy. These people were crazy back in the day. I, I, I'm i believing this. I ain't gonna lie to you. Try to tell you that after the last reset, they was repopulating these cities with these artificial babies. And you didn't believe me. But when I... Yeah, I remember my boy. We bringing it back to him. You know what I'm saying? He ain't been posting. But look, we still remember, bro. Hey, you one of the goats. Yeah, I got your ass. Oh, I've got your ass. This is a postcard from 1910. And the message can't be any more clearer. It literally shows a machine with the words repopulation. And the man has a lock and the woman has the key. And if you think that's weird, then listen to this. There was a time when people used the postal service to mail their children. In the early days of the US parcel service, there weren't clear guidelines at what you could and couldn't mail. In January 1913, one Ohio couple took advantage of the US postal services, new parcel service, to make a very special delivery. Their infant son, I mean, come on. What kind of unhumane thing is this? So once upon a time, it was legal to mail a baby in the United States. It happened more than once and by all accounts. These people are not human. They have to tell you what they're doing. It's a part of their code. And this postal card is showing those artificial babies on those so-called orphan trains being shipped all over the country. Cause that ain't some creepy shit right there. I ain't gonna lie to you, cause that's not creepy, y'all. Uh. And you know what she was. The lands of custodians, but all lands. Another of the most important lands due to their great manipulation and control of other dome worlds throughout the Great Dome. For a great period of time they were considered the most powerful beings in this Great Dome until 
the appearance of the Anunnaki and beings from Nibiru, Pan Lands. Mind you that Pan, God Pan is, stands for panic. When you get panicked, it's from the God Pan. It is known that the custodians, or at least much of their strength, is outside the Great Dome by finding and forcing the creation of a passageway to the outside. Some theories tell that they regretted having done so as they encountered hostility from the other side at several points and now fear losing everything they have achieved so far. This generates great uncertainty in all the other dome worlds since it is known for sure what will happen happen when they return, for better or for worse. For this reason, the ancestrals together with the Cassiopeians took the opportunity to send many ships to the different worlds for exploration, since the most important beings, most of the real leaders, are focused on this new conflict together with the Anunnaki leaders. The last thing we were able to publish about these lands was about the exploration of Mikha, that hero who broke formation and headed directly to those latitudes under the darkness and fire of the custodians. Not finding any matter connector or portal, he has not been able to enter and ended unconfirmed with the destruction of his ship and possible death. The scanning achieved with the technology available at the time led to a better understanding of his dome world. Also over time we obtained more information about this mysterious place that is worth analyzing. Its main area is the central core called Baal, which is surrounded by large walls and volcanic lava. In this great rock can be seen several craters from which also born portals into the interior. It is unknown what is found there. These are several advanced laboratories with genetics of the different existing races. Even races from outside this great dome have been recently added. The entrance exit portals are unknown. It has not been yet possible to penetrate this area due to its great mystery and advanced technology. The custodians are known for carrying out colonizations of other races, squeezing their resources and eventually abandoning them, except in the case of humanity, who they do not want to abandon because they know their great spiritual potential and connection to the celestial lands could cause them greater harm in the future. So they're afraid of us, you know. That's why they can't let us go. Regarding their morphology, custodial beings have the ability to change their forms into different species. They have done so throughout all the cycles of mankind, also during wars. However, we can deduce that their form looks similar to the following. So they're supposed to look like this here, apparently. So there you have it guys, these were the custodians who live the Baal lands. Alright, catch you next chapter yo. Yeah. It is, it's very peaceful. I bet you want nobody here to scream at you. Won't hear who scream? Myself, I bet you want no ice cream out here, come on. 
Cause um I stay ready, so I don't have to get ready. If this have to be a weapon mm. for you, it will be. Cause what? I will stick you in your eye. You said I bet you won't nobody hear you scream out here. I said I bet you won't bring no ice cream out oh, here. Oh yeah, Play, you know what? I'm going back this way. Cause I'm sure when people say that and we out here in the wilderness, in the woods, and you gonna say something like that to me, come on. you know people kill their pants. I said trust you. I bet you won't eat no ice cream out here. Come on, come on. You think I'm finna walk somewhere with you talking about bet you won't nobody hear you scream? Boy, is you crazy or just stupid? Come on, come, come yeah, on. Yeah, I think you're stupid. It was a joke. No, I don't play it like that. It was it. a joke. Are you talking play, about people killing like their parents this. and stuff? They do. They do. Not me, though. Come they, on. Let's, don't, I don't, no, I don't let's just go you. finish walking. Nah, I'm finna go get in my car. And you finna be left in these woods. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> oh, it's real. Hey, look, man. Hey, what an amazing video, man. Hopefully, y'all watch it all the way to the end. Make sure y'all send this video to your friends, your family. You know, we have a good time over here, man. The moral of the story is you can't even trust your own people. You feel me? What they say, the custodians, they, the mugs, they can, they can transform. They can transform. They can turn into us. You know, they can look like us. You know, appear as us. They can appear as entities that's pivotal to, you know, current life-changing events in society, you know? manipulating things time your energy resources but they can't let us go it sound like a a lot of reasons for you know like bitter extras and stuff like that you know just just can't let go we know how this story goes it never goes well when somebody's in their feeling and the other person is over them you know and that's us because we are that it factor we know who we are we're building on that we're progressing we're expanding, you know what I'm saying? Getting smarter and smarter by the daily, you know? And I appreciate y'all for sending y'all positive vibes to the channel, you know, spending your time because that's a resource. And I do appreciate y'all coming here, collaborating with me on these videos. And I do appreciate y'all, man. But look, make sure y'all here protecting your families, your energy, and you out here doing everything that you want to do. And just don't be doing everything for everybody. Take some time, you know, and take care of yourself. Your mental health, your physical health, everything. Meditate, work out, drink your waters, get chlorophylls, you know, eat a balanced diet and just do what you want to do with this life. And I'm not talking about monetary gain, just money. Just really stepping into who you are, bro, like bro or female. Really be you, you know, authentic people. That's what this world is missing. Authentic people, because a lot of people, how many times have y'all been in traffic and you see there's two lanes? But then there's one lane where there's like 10 cars at one red light. But then there's an open lane where you still can go straight when the light turned green, but nobody's over there. Everybody's just following each other. That's not the life that I live. I'm that person that goes into that other lane at the front row at the light and I'm waiting for it to turn green because I'm not sitting in this line like you dummies. I'm just, I just got to be real. Call the spade a spade. Those are the NPCs of the world. But look, man, I appreciate y'all, man. I love y'all. I'll see you on the next video. And like I always say, spread love because there's too much hate in this world. I love you guys. See you on the next video. And I'm out, though. Loud.